Okay, Jimmy back with Small Engine King. Told you guys I would show you a video of putting this TS-800 still concrete saw back together. Alright, so I just replaced the diaphragm and the carburetor. So I've showed you that already in one of my previous videos. Now, I ended up replacing the primer bulb on this as well because... Uh, the person that had it before me put a wrong primer bulb in here and it was sitting all weird and it wasn't priming correctly. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little trick. If you look, I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, but if you look on the back side of, of the... You can't really see it. Oh, there we go. There's a good angle. I love working on this equipment because these guys were fairly smart in engineering these. There's different ports. If you look on the back side of these, there's different ways of putting, that just pops right out. See, it's easy. Now I had a bunch of these I just bought. Uh, you can buy like 10 of them for like 15 bucks or whatever. It's, it's, it's simple, it's easy, but they're smaller. Let me see if I can find what they had. Yeah, they had this one on here. And this is not the correct one for this saw. So you can see that these ports are different. These are bigger, these are smaller. And then between here and here is, 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 is smaller than this, this one. Big difference. But they had that one in here. Now, if you look on the back side of this, you can see it looks, they have a notch here, 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 and here. So the smaller one, it, it's a little challenging to get in there, but once it's in there, it's in there. You just see how these go in like this. Well, the smaller one, if you turn it, it's gonna go in here like this, not this. Worst case scenario on that whole thing is you gotta replace these fuel lines because you might have to have a little bit longer. So have some fuel line on hand. So I'm going to put this little guy back in here, and it is, again, a little challenging to put it in there. So you put one side in. I always take my handy dandy little screwdriver, give it a little nudge while I'm pushing on the primer bulb, and she just clips right in. That simple. And she's in there good, too. All right, uh, trick, okay, so. People always, I get a lot of comments on how to route your fuel lines. There's only two generally on, on this particular saw. And you got two ports on the back here. You got a small or a longer port and then you got a shorter port. This is what I'm gonna say and this is the easiest way of figuring this out. All right, push the primer bulb. Put your finger on one port. Let go of the primer bulb. See it's stuck? Let go and she pulls. That means that this smaller port here, the shorter one, is pulling fuel. All right, so on these saws, and generally with all of them, if there's a primer system on here, you would think automatically that you're wanting to pull fuel from the tank. That is not the case here. This is the return. You need to pull fuel from the carburetor. So think of this for a second. What you're doing is you want to pull fuel from the tank through the carburetor system. You want fuel going through the carburetor, right? Right. That's how you get gas into the cylinder to fire off. So you want fuel to pull through this line on top of the carburetor, and then the return, the excess fuel goes back into the tank. So the short one goes on top, And then the longer one down here goes on the longer one, on the back. So when we go to prime this system, we're doing a dry run here. See how it immediately, almost immediately filled that up. And, it's a, and it feels like it should. There's no hesitation. There's a ton of pressure. That's exactly what you want there. Easy peasy. All right. Now we're going to line this all back up, put that on there like that, sits in there nicely. Now you've got 
a line here you've got to hook up. Use your long pair needle nose. I love these things. I use them for everything. Make sure they're on there nice and snug. You've got another line underneath here. You want that attached right there. Okay. Double check everything. Make sure you know. Make sure you're all your fuel lines. I put new fuel lines on here, new primer bulb, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure they're not pinched. If they're pinched, it, it won't run right. So we've got a clear sailing there, clear sailing here. All right, breather tube. You want to stick it back in the channel. That could be a little tricky, but it basically just pushes in, locks right in. All right, now I do want to show you one more thing, guys. I had some trouble, and, th and this is with any concrete saw that you deal with. I'm going to go back to taking it apart to even get to this stage. <laughs> you got to think of this for a second. You're, you're cutting concrete, and there's debris everywhere, and concrete is hard as a rock, right? So if you go to take these screws out to pull these off, and you think you got a strip screw 90% of the time, there isn't a strip screw. You just have debris in the channel. This is a T27 Torx bit. That's all you're gonna need to pull this thing apart besides the 5 16 socket to pull this part off of the carburetor. So what I do is even with the cover on, you can, you can take this screwdriver and go down in the middle and then just kind of clean it out. Go back and forth, clean it out. You're not gonna hurt the threads too much if you're just gentle with it. Get it, get it, get it down until you hit bare metal. And then I always take a, 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 an air blow gun from my air compressor and then blow it back out and I'll do it a couple different times. That way your bit fits right in there. Otherwise you're just gonna hit the very tip and it's gonna spin and, and you're gonna think, oh crap, it's screwed, it, it, it's, it's stripped out. No, that's not the case on concrete saws. Generally you got crap in here. So, I wanna throw that on there. All right, so we're going to put this thing back together. Now, on this, before you put the top cover on, you've got a couple of screws that go down into here. You're going to want to put those in first. Likewise, when you take the cover off, you're going to want to pull the cover off first before you take this off. So, you've got a couple screws on the bottom. Perfect, perfect. Well, that's good there. Now, uh, let's put my, my uh, 5 16 back on there. There. Before I forget to do that. Nice and snug, we're good to go there. Alrighty then, so now, there is a trick, you want this choke sideways, you want it open when you put this cover on because there is a notch. You see how it's longer here than this way? That's how you gotta put the cover back on. Now this can be a little tricky, so you don't force this thing. If you force it, you will break stuff. You don't want to do that. Make sure that all these holes line up. See how it just kind of popped down in there? It was that easy. I can feel like that's exactly where it needs to be. I always start on the top. Sock that down. That one. And we've got one a screw on this side and a screw on this side. This is one of the easiest pieces of steel equipment that I've ever worked on, actually. 
and I have worked on pretty much everything. Now, mind you, I'm going to clean all this up, but this is just for video purposes. All right, so this goes in here. Look, if you look, this is the pre. This is called a pre-filter. It goes right here. Actually, this isn't even too bad, dirty wise, but either way, we're still going to clean her up. All right, so and the air filter looks pretty good. <laughs> just got to be blown off, wiped off. So slide that in right there. Now there is a little channel right right here that slides into here so you want to make sure that lines up just right and she should just slide right in and then you've got your four screws holding your filter housing on which are these right here make sure that we're lined up now i don't sock them all the way down until i get all of them fairly in there And then I'll go back through and sock them all down. That way I know I've got grab on all of it. Make sure that one hit. Okay, we're good there. And then you have the top cover. Now there's little teeth on the top cover. They just slide in. It's like a hood. Slide them in, drop it down. Make sure your screw is nice and straight up and down. Socks right down. And then your cover for your air filter and that just kind of sits in there you hold it here make sure it's nice and even that's it now let's see if this baby will fire off after i did all that work i got choke uh, let's see if i can show you guys here all right now well, there i've already primed it so we know we got fuel is now it's fairly warmed up you should be able to walk up to it pull it one time and it should start with no nothing else done to it sweet there we go all done